Hi everyone, my name is Sergei Natochi. I'm the curator of the first Metaverse Architecture Biennale, and I would like to welcome here two teams that took first and second place in the People's Thank Choice you. Award of our show. So uh, we have here Stepan from SA Lab and Reem Mohammed and Akshaya from Meta Architects. Hi guys. Thank you so Hi. much. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. Today, uh, I would really like to get to know your projects better. How did you develop the concept and uh, how did you actually become uh, Metaverse Architects? So uh, to structure this discussion, I will first uh, let uh, Stefan present his project and then we'll uh, shift to Meta Architects and then we'll just uh, kind of continue our conversation about the Metaverse uh, architecture and your contribution to this new evolving industry. Stefan? Hi, everyone. Let me share my screen. Okay, can you see it? Yes. OK, so uh, our project is called Fragile Pavilion. And um, the main question we we're discussing inside our team is uh, what do we want to take from the past into the future? And the topic of the Biennale presence of the future uh, really pushed us to this question because we think that facing past is very important because it prevents from uh, repeating itself. If you have something bad in the past and you face it and you kind of think it over again and again, uh, you have the chance to prevent it from repeating in the future. So uh, lots of data in our pavilion uh, is a user-generated content. Uh, we were collaborating with a company, Gonza Research, who are uh, anthropologists, and our pavilion is like a combination of architecture and anthropology with uh, the help of digital tools. Uh, we made this pavilion as uh, uh, a lot of different uh, precious things for different people. And we had a bunch of questions uh, that we were asking people in a Google form before we started working on the shape of the pavilion. and. Um, you can see these questions now, and some of them are uh, just ordinary questions like describe the most perfect picture of a weekend. And some of them are not so ordinary because they uh, make you think about some maybe sad events that happened in your life, like what is the one sad memory that you would never want to forget and why? And people were answering those questions. We got uh, answers from nine countries and we used AI to represent each answer as an icon in our pavilion and the music that uh, you can hear in the background when you're experiencing the pavilion in the world's platform uh, this is the music that was created with answers to the question what if every sound in the world disappears which one should remain so people were answering what sound should remain in the future and from those answers we created this generative soundtrack uh, the design language of architecture um, stretches the idea of the fragile something fragile fragile forms and it really reminds us about maybe butterfly wings or uh, some fragile plants or maybe leaves or flowers something like that and the pavilion itself is located on an island uh, and you navigate through the space following the particles that you can see in our world space uh, basically the 3D shape was designed with Rhino, uh, Grasshopper, and then uh, reworked a little bit in Blender. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's it, guys. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, uh, and I'll be happy to answer. Were there any uh, projects that uh, have inspired you and uh, uh, that you can say that were the references to your project, or uh, how did you come up to this idea? Like, uh... um, I wouldn't say there were like direct projects that were inspiring us. We were just uh, thinking over the idea of how do we represent the answers and uh what people are saying about the future and uh, first of all we were thinking about maybe having like a lot of spheres and have some objects maybe 3d objects of what people are saying like for example somebody wants uh, a cat nearby in his uh, the, in the best sunday for example the best weekend when he describes the best weekend he describes a cat sitting somewhere nearby so we were thinking about maybe having a 3d model of a cat uh in a bunch of spheres and in every sphere something special uh, for somebody is located uh but then when we were kind of thinking about the technical uh, aspects of the pavilion that we should build uh we came to the idea of having and and when we got um uh, familiar with the mechanics of the spaces we were working with like the central end and worlds uh, we came with this idea of cards popping up uh, when you click on something in worlds space and uh, this is how we uh, ended up with this cards option and then we had to somehow represent them in a 3d space and uh, also uh, following this fragile idea that we were having, we were just combining different, uh, I would say, nature-inspired forms. Like this pavilion reminds me, for example, of a flower maybe, and each petal of the flower is an idea of someone else about the future, somebody else about the future, and this is an answer to a question we were asking during the preparation stage for designing of our pavilion for me it really reminds sort of a neural system with uh, all the links that uh, break to this kind of big cables that sort of unite all of these ideas and aggregate them it is uh it is really cool uh in terms of the Kind of architectural quality because uh, all of this is uh, sort of suspended and ephemeral and uh, yeah thank you very much uh, i really enjoyed the design and uh, i would like to give the word to our uh, uh first place winners meta architects and uh, it would be great to get to know how did you progress with your idea thank you Thank you so much. We're also excited so to be part of the first Metaverse Architecture Benali and very proud to be the first place winners of People's Choice Award. We're very excited to share our project as a team to the world. Today. So we would like to welcome everyone to Meta Mansion, where the Metaverse meets high fashion designed by our innovative team meta architects consisting of muhammad shaukat akshayar patli glamour age and myself Rim Bamana. so meta mansion is a visionary project that seamlessly blends the immersive metaverse experience with the captivating allure of high fashion it's a collaborative effort between our team meta architects and fashion brands designers and models who share our vision of redefining luxury in the metaverse. Within the central land, our project is a gateway for visitors, offering them seamless entry point into our crafted meta mansion. It is a world where fashion owners can showcase their NFT collections, where runaway fashion events come to life, and where anyone can experience the fusion of fashion and nature in the metaverse. But that's not all. 
Uh, in worlds, our project harmoniously merges architecture, fashion, and nature. It inspires visitors to explore the limitless possibilities of fashion and its profound impact on our lives, bridging the past, present, and the boundless future. So join us on this journey as we explore the future of virtual architecture, where the beauty of nature and the metaverse seems intertwined. My team, Muhammad, uh, my teammate Muhammad, will take it from here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so the reason behind why we have choose a fashion design, like why uh, it's it's more like an uh, choose like we, it's great. We think that is a great space for creating an innovative and uh, in, as a create in, innovative and try to create an, an another like very exciting things. So here's why we have created uh, three uh, like seven different points. That's why we choose the, the fashion design for this metaverse. So uh, we we know that uh, architecture has been defined as, as an art and sign as well that the fashion has been defining as an aesthetic and functional uh, functionality. So we we took this opportunity to to join like to mix between them between technology and the, and the fashion. So in this case, it will be creating an immersive and create uh, immersive and uh, interactive uh, experience so as well as google will empowering the fashion brands it will make brands to to grow more uh, and make make those fashion and make those designers to to create a very uh, to innovate and try to make more uh, like to, to there's an like uh, no 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 limits uh, between each uh, in this metaverse so it will be globally connected like in no uh, th there will be no limitation like no anything it's like it's very simple just by clicking and you will be directed to to this metaverse to this uh, to this uh fashion uh brands and you will see the, their uh, their their collections so that is a great offer for uh for that brands which is which are going to use our uh metaverse and what we are thinking of that meta is uh, our metaverse is what built for make these uh, brands to 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 pop up in the world. So as well, we think that is um, that we 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 believe in a sustainable future and uh, and innovations. So in this case, we will uh, we present it as well. You think that everything is like in sustainable, uh, like uh, every material is sustainable, everything is sustainable. As well, we will uh, make those brands to be sustainable as well, like supporting them to uh, by making sustainable environmentally. It will make the the worlds to to work, to go uh, more better. Uh, and uh, we we know that it's like a metaverse, it's a storytelling, and as um, as well, it's like an uh, making these brands of fashion designs, making them like a, uh, like it's kind of like making for them like a journey for them. Like in each in each collection of them, it has a story. It holds the story. It holds it uh, that way. So as well, community and inclusivity. Like uh, it, uh, in we know that uh, the fashion designing is is like an uh self-expression so in this metaverse we we give the freedom to each peoples to to express themselves uh freely uh as well we came here like in our metaverse we we thought about of making uh several spaces uh go with uh like an nft nft a virtual uh spaces and a social gathering uh making them like a, a store digital assets uh, like uh, music festivals, uh, uh, customized avatar, like it will be, uh, it can, it will make the brands to showcase every uh, every product that they have, and uh, it's more like an, it's, it's more like a metaverse building. It's like making a making a very social gathering area in these places. So from here, uh, my mate is going to continue, Guillermo. Thank you, Mohammed. Well, uh, the concept development was a timeline between uh, primitives and complex geometry. These uh, become part of a bigger conceptualization of fabrics in nature and how to bring the geometry together to interact with the, with the context that we design as well. So when we thought about how we could relate geometry and topology and and the context in a graphic way that can be naturally guided by the eye. We just analyze how the creases of the 
of our clips were behaving also how nature by itself creates an ecosystem that talks directly into each other and have a conversation in between that correlates everything to the eyes. So they just look perfect when you look at it. When you see nature, it looks perfect. So we just analyze those kind of things that makes an, uh, nature behave how it behaves and we try to replicate it in, an, in the metaverse in a graphical way. So by analyzing the context and the clip we have, uh, we thought, how can we interact with it? How can we talk directly to it, but without disturbing the context? So it looks like it, it's part of everything and everything is part of itself. So mm, in the next part, we analyze uh, the, the creases of the mountain and the fabrics, how those foldings of the fabrics behave and we try to replicate it in uh, in the topology and in the in the in the geometry in top view in section but also in perspective because when you walk through to the architecture you don't see it in top view or in section you you see it in in a whole as a whole in 3d so that's we want to look every corner every perspective every angle of it in a natural way So the stage one was um, creating the topology. And from here, uh, my partners will take on to the next steps of the journey. So these are the sectional views. Uh, these are the flow plans for each level. Each level, we have different kind of spaces like uh, like a virtual space called party area and and a, and a runway fashion area, which will be useful for conducting virtual events and social interactions. And this digital expression is kind of connecting, uh, it's, it's acting as a bridge between both real world and the physical world. So both real world and digital world, which kind of which kind of acts acts as a creating like an uh, adding a value to the physical world as well. And when it comes to the digital world, which which kind of enhances the physical world more in an immersive way by adding uh, AR and VR. And um, and if you can see in the sectional views, we have given a lot of screens, which which is acting as a which is acting as a uh, which is acting as a uh, to to display the products of the of a brand to display the products of a particular uh, videos or uh, which can be used in a multiple way and uh, uh, Mohammed, can you go to the next slide yeah so this is the this is a quick run through for the entire Space, which has been developed in Unreal Engine. And uh, so these kind of collectibles, digital collectibles called uh, called virtual NFTs, which which we can, which is which is much related to the uh, digital twins, because nowadays people wanted to create their digital twins as much as uh, as much as in the real world. So these are the accessories. So there's a lot of potential to visualize the real world in the digital realm when it comes to the real metaverse when when people wanted to create their own building in a real world they can easily visualize them in in digital world and uh, they can create nfts like this and they can promote their products their their uh, uh, special collections Yeah. These are the few views of the Meta Mansion. These are the views from the worlds and uh, 
th these interactive screens is much more uh you know very very interesting in when it comes to metaverse when you you can interact with the objects you can interact with the planes you can you can scan the you can just scan the object and you can just visualize them in your just just through your phone so so this is the uh, this is a model which we have created this is the basically the upper level of our meta mansion which we created as an augmented reality and uh, we we even actually created an event uh, kind of a treasure hunt when a people can go and uh, uh, they can explore the shells if they found the shells and we we are uh, giving this mesh uh, so that they can 3d print it so yeah So this is the digital avatars, which uh, which kind of creates um, uh, which which is very very much important when it comes to metaverse. People are owning their own digital garments. They are owning. They are they are buying uh, a lot of digital garments. People are going so crazy about uh, NFTs. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> Uh, it was very interesting. I really enjoyed, uh, like, uh, enjoyed the whole presentation, like from the sketch to 3D modeling to 3D problem solving and finding the aesthetics and so on. But what I uh, also especially like is that you tested some other, uh, so to say, metaverse uh, platforms or medias, uh, like. Uh, the use of Unreal Engine and the use of augmented reality. So, can you tell, um, please, uh, sort of the difference between uh, all of these medias that you've tried? So, Decentraland Worlds, Unreal, and uh, augmented reality, and what, uh, like, what can we learn from you from uh, kind of having this experience and using this uh, different uh, medias? Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, well, in regards of modeling, everything, it's modeling quads. And also the topology is really well thought and crafted. So we didn't have any problems for shadings. Uh, for, you know, the topology has to be really, really, really mind thought. So it behaves in a, in a correct way. Also trying to not have random just pull here, pull out there and try to optimize the most possible way the shape, so it also reduces the poly count for the when you reach two other systems and when you bake the geometry. Um, Mohammed, I know you can also share a, uh, more of, of this process. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, in this way, like, uh, yeah, uh, in this as you see that uh, we we have been trying that like uh make making uh we, we first of all we choose our site to be uh, located at the cliff uh, like uh, as well we wanted to make an like a blending with with the nature like everything is as if you can see it's like a, an organic list it's kind of like a, a but popping out something from the nature and it become the building so that was our uh, our concept was about like uh, as making the building not like a just very something very rare inside inside the uh, inside the let's say the forest or this nature so we wanted to be the part of the nature so that's what we we've been thinking of so uh we we have been trying to making like uh, if you see that from from a top level it's, it's kind of like a uh like kind of like a rock is coming out and in, in, it's in the below one part is you see the waves like uh, and this is reacting with the with the water uh with surroundings so in each part we, we have been thinking of this way like being part of the nature like not uh being a very inside there no we we wanted to be like in part of the nature not not destroying the nature so that's what our idea was about like building a future sustainable uh, thing and we believe that metaverse is a, is a future it will it will take this so we are ability, like we are supporting uh, um, let's say sustainable sustainable uh, future sustainable architecture and sustainable as well. The, those brands that are coming there, so 
uh, use assistant materials. This we, we we need we need to protect our environment. We need to protect our air. So that's uh, what what we believe and what we we did it from this. So as well, we uh, as you can see that uh, in here we have been testing and uh, experimenting until we we came into the final design. So we we have been passing through many of design and we as well use them. Uh, we have been using the 3D Maya software for this one, and uh, like uh, as well, we have been testing with the with the Unreal Engine until we came into the uh, till we came into the, the the let's say the the world's platform and the, the Decentraland's plat platform. Um, we put the Decentraland. We use the uh, the blender, uh, the blender material, uh, the blender software. So uh, in every case, like uh, we have been trying to unify between the the Senderland and the, and the, and the world, and we uh, we have been thinking of in this way. Yeah, thank you. Nice. And uh, what, what was the experience? Uh, like, what was the point of using uh, augmented reality? And uh, uh, yes. you said that you yes. made this kind of activation. Okay. Exactly. People participated in this. So, um, yeah, C can you yeah, comment exactly. on this a little bit more? Of course. Uh, so, 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 in order to make this metaverse, uh, to make it more uh, like a more like an experience, like making people more uh, go and uh, let's say explore, explore the design, and you know, to, to not be bored by just moving, moving, moving. No, we want to make it some parts of like activities in there. Like you go into let let me share some of them and uh, AR. Uh, we have been trying to do it. So, sorry, one minute. Um, yeah so as you can see in here uh we have been presenting several uh ir as well as not just an ir we have been presenting as well the mission to the to 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 those visit visitors that are coming into our world we have been presenting like if we have been hiding like three shells and in each shells it's in, in a different places so that's why we have been creating a very uh exciting uh uh metaverse so that's what uh our uh let's say uh our visitors like uh, our uh our metaverse so that's why we, we have been creating in each spaces an activity like we have been wasted in each we haven't wasted any spaces like we have been we have been trying to make each spaces an activity like not just go into there and you'll not see anything no you you will find in each spaces you will find something very special out there so that's what we have been trying to do out there uh as well the ar thing is is it will make an another activities that's uh making it for the brands uh let's say one of the brands will 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 uh will use this uh, this metaverse so that will uh, provide and making the, the visitors to to interact directly like face to face uh, this 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 material this uh, this product that they they will be presenting as an AR so this will be making for them much more easier to to interact with that product to see it's, it's kind of like in your hands in in your house in your in your space in your place so that's why we we found we find that then AR is a very important uh thing to be to be inside in our uh metaverse it's exactly. just like a, yeah, to, to to making our uh product like it's, it's kind of it's like there it's in there and you are interacting with this with with that product directly and you are in in your house so that will be making for these visitors to uh, much more easier to choose uh, what what product they will be choosing or what uh what they will be more interested yeah, yeah that's my favorite actually my favorite part of this whole metaverse experience is seeing how people are engaging in activities inside the metaverse people are clapping people are dapping are dancing they are interacting yeah. with us so that yeah. was uh, yeah best part of seeing that inside our models yeah exactly like in each part uh, as my mate said brim uh, like we have been like making space for with uh for for the visibles we have been making space for uh for, for showing the a uh, like for showing the outfits uh, uh product like we have one part is for the accessories so in each part we have been making a spe special spaces uh so that's what we be that's what we bring out of uh, into the metaverse yeah 
Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, both uh, projects that we have shown today, uh, they shared this idea of uh, uh, engaging with the audience in the comment. But th the difference is that with the SA Lab Pavilion, it was sort of an input uh, that uh, you kind of um, you formulated these questions to the audience, and then they were uh, influencing your designs and what it communicates. And uh, with the Meta Architects, we have it uh, shown on the other side where we have lots of products presented, some activations, and uh, there were several excursions uh, into space. And uh, it was always very interesting to see how architecture and this environment works as an input. And then people start to kind of uh, use it and uh, feel it as uh, as an actual sort of space uh, that can be used for social activities or games, um, etc. Uh, but um, in this context, uh, I actually think that uh, it would be interesting to discuss how you see uh, the future of uh, metaverse architecture. So having uh, kind of this experience of the metaverse biennale, or I feel that you have uh, uh, sort of followed some recent use in technologies and architecture. Um, how do you see the metaverse architecture in five or 10 years? Stepan, uh, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, ideas? Yes, uh, if I may, um, I think one important thing is gonna be hardware development because for us to run, the metaverse we need the uh, we need hardware we need computers we need power so i think the the more the powerful the tools we have become the better the metaverse will become as well it's gonna be like a loop in between so also the technique it's really important to emphasize on this because when you're modeling since the first time you're uh, developing the geometry and you're preforming your space if you relay on just free forms by itself, you're, you're not going to have an optimized geometry. You're not going to have a, a, a good topology. So the more you relay, like in real life, it's basically like real life optimization of geometry. If you optimize your geometry in the digital world, the quads are going to be better and they're going to behave better. You're going to use less amount of memory. So also you have to optimize. So there's also the technique improvement, I think, the more the time we explore these tools, the more we are going to learn along the way, of course, but also it's going to be, a, a, you know, the, 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 the technological aspect is going to make us become more free to explore these kind of things. But also we have to use wisely this technology because if we also develop better techniques, we're going to optimize the way we are using the technology. I don't know if I make sense. Uh, Totally, totally. But uh, let's uh, try to focus not on this kind of tactical side, like the resolution of it and the hardware. Of course, it's going to develop uh, and uh, we all kind of understand how it works with uh, smartphones and computers. But um, I believe that um, there would be some sort of uh, new use cases, new tools that would allow us uh, to communicate in a, a much more uh, sort of uh, to connect the virtual and the physical in a much more uh, fluid way and i really enjoyed this kind of uh, presentation that uh, apple gave with their vision pro where they had this kind of little button that controls the level of uh, augmented and virtual reality and uh, for me it is uh, uh, they're not kind of the first ones who did it, but uh, the way they show this kind of very soft control between uh, these two uh, sort of uh, traditionally separate realms, uh, I think is very uh, nice and suggests uh, that there would not be this kind of, okay, this is the uh, VR platform, this is AR platform, this is one experience, that's the other, and uh, we split them. I believe that really there would be this kind of uh, uh, very soft control uh, uh, that would allow us to move uh, 
yeah, uh, get a smooth sleeve between these three arms. Yes, uh, I agree. I agree in this regard. And also, I think that, for example, the necessities of, of a client will uh, will shape more how the metaverse is going and the more clients we are going to have we're they are going to need more for example the more clients ask for metaverse the more interesting the metaverse will become so it's going to be like a transition to from the physical world to the digital world and maybe we can we will create a new platform for the web we are right now using google to do research and explore things but what will happen if we create a city where you, for example, that's a, a, a city of science and you can explore all the research that laboratories are doing, uh, technologies are doing uh, in real time, maybe. Uh, those kind of things, I think also Akaya and Rim have a really good vision of this. So why don't you also share a little bit of your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I wanted to, uh, yeah, no, go on, please. Yeah. So I believe that after 10 years, Metaverse Architects will be creating a more sort of a space which will be more equal to the real world. Like, uh, for example, if a client wants to visualize their uh, their original building in the Metaverse, like they kind of go and experience the entire field. And if they wanted to, uh, you know, if they wanted to create a particular furniture for, for their space, if they wanted to, like, it's not just a PNG image or JPEG image. They, they can just see and uh, finalize the design. If they wanted to really experience it, they can uh, go and experience them in the metaverse. So, so I believe that maybe after ten years, all the meta, I mean, all the three D visualizations, like normal renders, instead of renders, like client will be more, uh, you know, aware of what really the metaverse is and how we can make use of it and how we can make use of it in terms of uh, collaborating it with the uh, real architecture. Like, uh, like, like, for example, if, 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 if there is a company, they wanted to uh, pitch a design for the, for the construction or something, like how they can use the metaverse space in order to showcase their presentation. So this is how the place is going to look. And uh, they can, you know, wear an, uh, they can even wear a VR headset and they can uh, virtually experience their building. So I believe that, um, uh like all the metaverse architects like there won't there won't be any metaverse architects like all the architects will be doing this thing instead of doing 3d visualizations so i believe that this will be the turn for next 10 years yeah thank you thank you i know that uh stefan you did uh some projects um with uh, like the games uh for children sort of planning their school design. And uh, I believe that uh, this is a very nice example that uh, actually relates to this kind of ideas of uh, interactive visualization. Because uh, yeah, nowadays, when architects produce the visualizations, it's sort of the end result, where you kind of uh, edit the design in itself a little bit. But uh, usually, um, the, the client or the user doesn't really uh, has an opportunity to influence much uh like your design process but with projects like uh, your pavilion or this project that you've done before this uh idea of uh, uh, a virtual architecture as a stage of uh like is, as a stage in production of uh, physical architecture becomes more interactive so maybe you can kind of expand on this idea do you have some concepts of how it can be used uh in the future Okay, thank you for the question. Um, I guess what we were exploring uh, both in this project for the Metaverse Biennale and before in our during our work, this was like an idea of some kind of a sandbox where people can play around with different parts and maybe combine them into something else. And uh, with this game uh school game uh case we were playing around with different rooms spaces and different kind of scenarios and everybody could um, enhance different scenarios bring in different parts like robots or 3d printers or anything uh that was already prepared in this game and 
uh, here in this metaverse pavilion, we were just like really totally open to whatever can come. Uh, and we were working with the shape of the pavilion based on the answers that we were given. And I guess that, and this is probably one of the uh, topics that I'm interested in right now as an architect, as a researcher, is the blend between virtual and physical and also how, how can we like combine all these parts together and I see that web is becoming like really a platform for this and I guess this kind of sandbox approach where you can like have a, a kit of different kind of parts and then you combine them together and you have like a product that can be then 3D printed or assembled by robots or maybe you combine different parts of your house and then this house is built somewhere and you can live with it uh, inside this house. I think this is the idea that will gain more and more popularity, will become more and more popular. Uh, probably, and I guess that the tools that we are exploring right now, those, I don't know, Unreal Engine, Blender, Ryan and Grasshopper, and everything that we have right now as architects, uh, this will all be helpful to bring those ideas to life and make this kind of interactivity between the final form of the project and how uh, a client actually can communicate and work with this uh, project, uh, I think this will be the next step, probably. Yeah, I just want to add one thing else. Uh, like, uh, I see this metaverse, like, for, for the future, like, let's say for 10 years, it will be definitely making the future, uh, you know, like, um, uh, like before this metaverse coming out, like uh, let's say in our field in architecture, you should have an you should have a place to experiment and to everything. Like you do very costly machines you will be building, and you will be just for testing one thing. No, and this this metaverse, no, and it's 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 making this it's making the process more easier. It's making this like a, uh, like testing the. Testing that building, uh, testing the different form, testing how it will be, uh, how it will be reacting with the with the, with the surrounding environments. As well, let's say you are in in a different part of the world. I mean, different part of the world, and and then we are connecting it at the same time. Like uh, with you are in your house, and I'm in your house, and then we are we are working together at the same time. And you, each one of us, it's. Is in in our same uh, places, so uh, that's a great idea, and this that's a great uh, uh, steps to to make it the future. And as well, if we if we go back to to let's say twenty nineteen, like once once the COVID nineteen is coming out, like what everyone was 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 at home, like. Uh, like everything was uh, locked down, and you you should stay at home, and like uh, no no social gathering was 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 there. So what that step is is a like a really great step for making the metaverse and reacting social gathering. Now I'm uh like um, now I'm in in another part of the another part of the world. And you are in another part of the world, and that which will making the social gathering, making the world. Uh, like a, a very let's say and making the world very small village like all of one is is, is knowing each other is, is interacting with each other so that's basically making the world is making more uh making more uh, let's say um uh, a relationship make, making it more making more relationship making more uh let's say um me and you are working together and uh making more easier the process as well as making the the process that's in a, in a, in a kind of such a gathering, and this is in a, in the term of the architecture and the experimenting. As well, if you go back, if you go to the education, this will this will be coming into more uh, step and will be uh, taking more. Uh, it will be bet better and and will be best for for every world. And I yeah. strongly believe that they should start teaching architecture students and architecture schools the metaverse tools. I recently graduated in, in 2022. But I really believe that it's 
a must, a must tool to be within student. They should experience it even before they start graduating. We all do like a lot of um, a lot of 3D models, but we don't know like what are we gonna do with it later. So it's gonna be pretty handy in this five years, not even ten years. Yeah, definitely. Do yes, exactly. You will see the spaces like you will see and you, everyone will see it. Uh, that's that's really great space for each student must must know like uh, like you you are even like in a school and just building and, and there and uh, so that's it. You, it's on a sheet and that's it. Like make it 3D and like making the people to interact with this building more. So that will be more interesting. Uh, I'd like to comment on this, uh, actually. Yeah. There is this uh, kind of a, quite a contradictory statement that if the virtual environment would allow architects to like, fully express themselves, go wild with the style and form, and uh, give uh, this extraordinary experiences to visitors of virtual architecture, uh, would that be uh, sort of will it be still necessary to produce this kind of uh, extraordinary buildings in the physical world? Shouldn't it become just sort of a very uh, normal uh, environment with very functional uh, aesthetics and uh, layouts? So because if you uh, kind of are able to get this kind of uh, experience in the virtual world, why would you need to have it in the physical world? Why would you need the buildings of you know, Gary or Zaha uh, that sort of give you this experience? But uh, uh, if we look from the kind of a practical perspective, they're not the most efficient ones there. Um, but uh, yeah, still they have to kind of um, uh, resolve some functional problems and maybe some more simpler, so to say, um, infrastructural uh, approach uh, would be uh, a more relevant one, especially with this idea of uh, sustainability that you have mentioned in uh, your presentation. Uh, what do you think about this? I believe we still need both because in virtual architecture, we, we're still not using our five senses till today. We can't smell and we can't touch. So I believe like, uh, um physical buildings are still necessary yeah but the way i understand that there would be more kind of haptic um uh, i don't know let's say clothes that would allow you to uh sort of move and feel something and uh, we already heard some uh news about this technology appearing even uh, those that sort of create the smell uh, they're limited now, they're very expensive, but uh, uh, let's say that uh, there would be some kind of, uh, uh, there would be some infrastructure, some tools some technologies for you to get this experience like absolutely fully, like, uh, you know, there is like uh, IMAX uh, cinema, but this would be sort of a next, next step for this kind of a, an architectural experience. Uh, I wish, yeah. I think uh, also it will challenge the, the the metaverse will challenge the physical world. So I think it will inspire. It it, it will not be one or of the other. It will be a bridge between reality and, and digital. And the more we push the digital design the more it will affect also the physical design i think uh it's a lot of um, a, a, an interesting approach of how can we de uh, defy reality and defy digital at the same time so if we see a really interesting building or 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 way to interact the building in the digital world how, how can we apply it to the physical world and okay we did this in the physical world how can i apply can we apply it to i think it's not one or the other i think it's an in between I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. 
I also think uh, in in several countries there are a lot of uh, difficulties in uh, you know creating more computational design fluid structures, uh, especially in countries like India or other countries like who, who there, there are a lot of difficulties to create uh, uh, you know more uh, uh, buildings in buildings like Zaha style or more fluid architectural style. In that case, and there are many companies like uh, they work remotely like where they want to showcase their products where they want to showcase their stuffs where they want to showcase their showrooms or something for for them i think uh, metaverse will be very useful and in that case like uh, we can go crazy with the designers when it comes to metaverse so there will be no limitations there will be no like they, they don't even need a physical space like in like if they if they are working completely remotely so play a like this will be very useful in countries where they can't explore much with forms so but then still it is it will be kind of an inspirational thing to uh, take it into the physical world as well yeah like i think um like right now in in iraq like I'm, i think i'm 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 only a guy who's who's using the metaverse and uh like I, i'm trying to teach every people like my friends my colleagues my university i'm trying to contact and greet them like telling them how metaverse is important for the future architecture and fuel for future students so yeah i'm, I'm trying like it's 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 very good uh, steps to 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 teach those peoples to teach like surrounding us and to to tell them uh, how uh, how this this technology let's it's a new technology and a new new thing is in a uh, in a world that is going on and everyone should know about it and this is what it will be uh, what this is what will be few future yeah thank you thank you uh do you have maybe some other questions or topic that you wanted to comment on uh, that we didn't uh, mention yet? Mm, I think I don't know. It. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. It was very nice to speak to you. Congratulations again for uh, participating at the Biennale and reaching uh, such amazing results. You really made the outstanding projects and I hope that you won't stop on this stage and we would see more metaverse projects from you. Uh, I would definitely follow you uh, everywhere I can uh, to be the first one to hear uh, about this project. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a pleasure. Good luck. Very great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. It was much. an honor. It was an honor. Yeah. Thank you.